Season 2 is going to be a bit awkward. To start off, we had a pretty nice season last time round. We won the Carabao Cup and we finished third in the Premier League. However, the Champions League was not too fruitful. In a way, being honest, we kind of overperformed in our first season as the United job. And because of that, we kind of have to suffer the consequences, as this season the board expects us to actually win the league. And look, all things considered, I'm not one to shy away from a challenge. And when you really think about it, considering we have a budget of 300 million, it wouldn't be too big of a challenge. Maybe we just sign one more player like a Frankie de Jong or a Kylian Mbappe and maybe the league is ours. But that's where things get complicated, because in this series, I can't sign players above the price range of 50 million. So it's led to a situation where if I don't win the league and if I don't, well, compensate by winning the Champions League or doing something crazy, this might be the last season of this career mode. I may actually get sacked. And it's not even a storyline thing, it's an actual thing the game might do to me. Even though I've been a good manager, I may actually get sacked if I don't win the league. But on the other side of the pond, we've got some pretty decent Music Academy players. True standouts being Charles Woodward with a ton of potential and Thiago Cardoso who has an equal amount of potential, maybe a bit less, but he is one who may slot into the first team. I also took the liberty of giving Garnacho a new contract after what he did last season. I do want to lock him down and I want to stop teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona from being able to prize him away with money. And speaking of transfers, speaking of that 50 million rule, I had to do a couple of things, pull a few strings and sign Presnel Kimpembe because with Varane's hole being left there, let's be real, we can't expect Lenny Yoro at his young age to be what Varane was for us last season. Bruno finally came back from injury in the summer and that was a huge boost to the squad. His position is still in a bit of jeopardy though because last season Mason Mount did pretty well, a lot better than expected in that attacking midfielder role. But back to the transfer business, I went ahead and I decided to clear out the club a little bit. A couple of sales here, a few loan for a youth academy player there and a bit more maintenance in basically loaning out players once again, selling the ones I'm not going to need or not gonna wish to use and basically just, for lack of a better word, doing admin renewing a couple of contracts here, putting players on the loan list there, the usual career mode stuff you do at the beginning of a season. Okay, so the sale of Ama Diallo is going to be a puzzling one, because to be honest, last season he did pretty good for himself. It was a pretty important substitute for Anthony in that right wing. But let me explain why I kind of let him go. Because I feel my job is in danger this season, and I actually want some youth academy players to shine in the series, I decided that Ama Diallo may as well have to go to make space for players like Thiago Cardoso. Is it favoritism? Yeah, it kinda is. But hey, hopefully the favoritism pays off. We ended up saying goodbye to a few more players via the loan system, but but we're gonna have to brush through this because it's been three minutes into the video and you guys have not seen anyone kick a ball. Once everyone comes back from the Euros in Copa America, we're able to see the squad in its full strength. And all I'm gonna say is, wow, it's a pretty good squad. Very, very different to what we saw last season. And who knows, maybe it can challenge for the league. But I don't like putting my hopes up that high because one issue we may come across is a bit of squad depth. But I think that's enough yapping. We gotta enter that first game of the Premier League and it's going to be kicked off at Old Trafford and against Leeds United. We get a pretty bad start as Leeds United is already on the attack and look at that, they end up scoring. It's going to be Jorginho Ruda to score the goal and keep an eye on that name because it's going to be very important in this game. 10 minutes later Jorginho breaks through the defense once more and he chips the ball over Andre Onana to make it 2-0 against United at Old Trafford. Yeah we're in a bit of danger here. You'd think that if a team wants to win the league they'd win the first game of the season especially if it's at home. Well Mason Mount agrees with that he sends the ball over to Garnacho and let's just say a shot like that is the beginning of something special guys. It shows that Garnacho still has that same form he had last season. A nice finish. And 55 minutes in, scoring that early, we may have been able to make a comeback, but we took one step forward, two steps back, as lead score via a set piece. And I'm gonna be honest, Andre Onana, maybe you should have stopped that ball. But with 40 minutes to go, we get another attack. We see Mount and Garnacho link up once more, number 7 to number 17. He beats his man expertly, so smashes one into the near post, and just like that, we may just have a lifeline courtesy of the Argentinian. Five minutes left, Hoyland just sent through, just came on the pitch and it looks like this place is about to become the theater of dreams. He starts one to Garnacho, all he has to do is finish but yeah. And football is a cruel sport, in such that if you don't score your chances, the other team surely will. And when the game is basically over, Georgina decides, you know what, I want my hat trick. So he gets it and he basically puts United to the sword at Old Trafford. We kick off to just say yeah game is over. First game of the season we lose 4-2 against Leeds United. Disappointing, yes, but I'll be honest, we were outplayed by Leeds here and this kid, well, he scored a hat-trick and sometimes there's not much you can do about that.
But it's another promoted side up next, it's Leicester City and I'm not planning on losing. Rashford matches that energy as in a 15th minute out of all people, he is the one who scores a header from a corner. But hey, I'm not complaining. And immediately from kickoff, Garnacho applies the pressure, he wins the ball back, he drives forward and he's very difficult to dispossess. He's doing some pretty nice dribbling over here. He runs through the gap, he shoots and that is an amazing finish. Well played Garnacho. A couple of moments later, Mount Dish is in the ball once more and to be honest, I have no words for this goal. And after that, Leicester City score. Yeah, they just score. But scripted video game antics aside, it was a very dominant 3-1 victory for Manchester United. And hey, after that performance, after what I saw from Garnacho, it does give me a bit of hope that hey, if we keep pushing, if a few more players show off performances like that, then maybe, just maybe, we actually can win the league.